שבוע טוב, בשם השם נעשה ונצליח. בעזרת השם, may the learning of the Torah that we do today may be in the זכות of כלל שאול as a whole, our חיילים and the חטופים that are still held in captivity. I would also love to give a very big mazel tov to my baby brother Michael Mordechai and Leah Jeraev, an addition to a baby boy. May you guys see a lot of nachat from him. May he become a gadol batora, a gadol babod et Hashem. May you guys be able to raise him and your other children <clears throat> in the ways of Torah because that's the only way there is to raise a child. May she nacht from them, may HaKadosh Baruch Hu bless them with all the blessings that there are in the Torah. And, Be'ezrat Hashem Rabotai, like we say, Chupav v'lema'asim tovim, that you guys should have the zuchut to walk them through their chupah and they should be able to do good deeds. But on the way there, make sure you educate them in the ways of Torah. Mazal Tov to the Jirai family and the Baruch Hu family. I do want to give a special Mazal Tov to Leah's father, which is our Kudo, Yuri Kudo. He does a lot, he mamish, he mamish. You know, I've seen father-in-laws, but he is something special. You know, he does so much. It's not because it's his daughter, but even with my brother, he does so much for them. Even a lot of times he helps us. It's not normal, Rabotai. The Boruch family, the heart that they have to go out and just want to help. That Yura, I want to give you personally a very, very big Mazal Tov and your new grandson, an addition to the family, Mazal Tov to you and your wife, of course. Rabotai, I would love to share with you today an Or Chaim HaKodesh. There's Or Chaim HaKodesh, he asks something very fascinating and believe me, it bothers almost every one of us, right? People want to change. People want, whether, I don't, I don't care what, Rabota, you want to apply this to weight, to eating healthy, to doing the right thing, to working out. I don't know what, whatever you want to apply this to. But I want to try to direct it to spirituality. You know, coming close to Hashem. I'm not telling that those things are not, on the contrary, they're very, very important. But I want to say what the Orach Haim says, but more directing it towards spirituality, more connecting ourselves to HaKadosh Baruch Rabotai, why is it that we don't change? Or Chaim is going to say right now, why is it that we as people do not change? What, we don't want to change? I'm thinking about normal people. I'm not thinking about people that are living their life like animals just to eat, drink, and have relations with their wife and go to sleep and the next day go back to work and in 40 years from now, they're dead. I'm not speaking about these people. These people, Rabotai, it's like the Gemara Masechet Baruch says, they're dead men walking. Speak to them about sport, about politics, about movie shows, they're listening. Open your mouth about the word of Torah, they can't take it. It's called Rabotai, dead men walking. What does it mean, dead men walking, if he's alive, no? Correct, same thing over here, he's physically alive. He's moving, he's eating, he's seeing, he's hearing. But spiritually, Rabotai, he is dead. He is desensitized from everything when it comes to spirituality. Rabotai, so I'm speaking about normal people. If you ask a normal person, a normal average Joe, why didn't you come and daven? Why didn't you learn? Why didn't you put on tefillah? Why didn't you put on tzitzit? Why didn't you become better? Why don't you have better ad, uh, better midot? He says, Rabbi, I want to, but I can't. It's not because he cannot. It's because there's something else that's holding him back from accomplishing. And what is that about that we're going to see today? It's the Yetahara. The Orach Haim is going to come and he's going to tell us that the Yetzirah Rabotai, which is what? It, this is the outside world, the outside world opinion on how we should live our life. That's what's really holding us back. What I mean by that is very simple, Rabotai. You have to understand, how can it be a person goes to a lecture, whether you be a guy or a girl, man or woman, doesn't matter. You go to a lecture, you get pumped. You say, that's it, I'm changing. Tomorrow morning, I'm changing. You wake up tomorrow morning you, as if nothing happened. You can't do it. You can't wake up in the morning, you can't learn Torah because you're tired. At night you're tired, you don't want to go. You don't want to honor your parents. It doesn't matter, you don't want to wear a long skirt. Does how's it? You just walked out so passionate, so enthusiastic. What happened? Rabotai, I want to just give you a small parable. You have to understand that when it comes to Avodot Hashem, it's all about going up. Hashem is Hashem, now he's not older in the Rabotai, he's not in the ground rolling. 
He's up, right? Hashem is in the, we say, Ben he's up high in the heavens. Why high? Because the person has to go up, 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 up. But what happens in the when a person wants to go up, 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 but he can't? Why is that? I'm going to give you an analogy. Imagine right now if I take a feather, no, if I take an arrow, a bow and arrow, if I take a bow and arrow, and I'm going to try to shoot it up, let's say six story, bu uh, six, six, uh, story building, but I will attach feathers to it on the arrow before I shoot it. I can tell right now it's safe, safe I can tell, let's just say it'll be able to reach at least the fifth floor easy. If you shoot it very hard, it's going to be able to go easy fifth floor. But what happens when I take the same arrow, I won't put feathers on it. I will put metal, a heavy, heavy metal nail on it. I'll make a hole, I'll put it like that, make it heavy, heavy. Now when I want to shoot, no matter how much I'm going to pull back and when I'm going to let go, it's not going to be able, able to even make it to the second floor. Why? Because all that weight is going to be holding him down. We need to understand that this is the way it works in Avodot Hashem. In Avodot Hashem, if you want to go up, 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 if you want to be able to succeed, you got to take these things off. One of these nails, these are the tumot. These are the things that we watch, the movies, the Instagram, the YouTube, all this garbage, the, the sports, the news, whatever you want it to be about that, all these things hold us back from growing. They literally pull us down. And we want to know why aren't we going up, up, up. Rabbi Isai, you ever see a balloon where they start putting that uh, air, where in, I think it's helium, to put it inside and the balloon goes up? One way to hold it down, you put a rock and you keep it, it's not going nowhere. This is exactly what Rabotai with the Orchim is going to tell us today. Rabotai, the Yetzirah is so smart. He does everything in his power to keep you down. How? Through doing everything but doing what Hashem says. Rabbi said, we came, we, we're living in a generation where it's not about what Hashem says I have to do. It's about what people think of me. It's about what the society thinks of us. You know, I, I tell you all the time, like I was just driving the other day with my two boys, I had to take them to Staples. Little boys, in her, 10, 11 years old. I think they're 10, 11, whatever. Yeah, I think they're 10, 11. And Blaine and her, about as we're driving, you know, you see one person, I saw a guy and a girl, like all metallic, you know, all tattooed and jeans ripped and their hair is like uh, discol discolored and so on. So I told my kids, I said, I want you to look at that couple. I want you just to pay attention to something. These children, these people were children at one point, correct? They were normal children. What happened? They don't come like that overnight. Because there was nobody to educate them. There's no, there's no right, there's no right, uh, there's no one way. One day the society is like this, one day the society is like this, one day the media tells you to do this, one day the media tells you like this, one day they tell you that you have to have three buttons, suit, the other day they tell you four buttons, suit, and then they tell you you have to have a vest. So basically, about tie. What's controlling the way we behave? The media, the 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 out. That's why it's called advertising. I finished St. John's for advertising, Rabotai. They sell you anything they want. It could be even bad for you. You still buy into it because that's how ad marketing. That's how it works. We take it. We take it. Give us anything, Rabotai. Well, you know, color up. Put a sugar here. Sugar coated there. Put a woman over here. Put a, uh, a nice car. Put it into your mind that this is how. If you have this product. You're going to feel that you're with this woman or you're in this car or you're going to have a better life. People are going to look up to you. Nobody, gonna look, nobody cares about your sign. Take a Range Rover. Why is a Range Rover so important? Why do people like Range Rovers? Why? Because what the society made of it. If the society tells you right now that a Hyundai is better than a Range Rover, then the people are going to start believing that a Hyundai is better than a Range Rover. Yes, a Bultai Range Rover, of course, is a nice car. It has better products. It has, it's done better. But Rabbi said, it's what we make it. It's what we make it. All I'm just trying to bring out a point over here is like this. Is that if we continue living by the society, we're going to be very, very confused in which way to go. This is why we have the Torah. The Torah tells us there's only one way and one way only. When you, if you look at Rabotai, at people that are Bemed religious, that really follow, that really not only learn Torah, learning is one thing, but you also have to follow what you learn. You also have to do what you learn. Rabbi Sifi, it's always from day one, from, uh, from day one, Rabbi Sifi, from once, from everyone, once we receive the Torah, till the end of the generations, 
You're going to have Jews with kippah, black and white, tzitzit, whatever, peyot, some of them have beards, whatever might be rabotai. I'm not going to get into halakh, you have to do it or not. No, you don't have to rabotai halakhically, but I'm not going to get into the halakhot of all this now. But I'm just trying to tell you, you'll see that certain sex, sex of Jews like Hasidim, they're going Hasidish. Litvak, Litvak, Ashkenazim, Ashkenazim, Sephardim, Sephardim. Why? Because Rabotai, we have one line, we have one line of tradition. We only follow that one line until the end of days. That's how it's going to be. What if we don't we have 500 different religions or 500 different opinions telling us, do this, do this. Rabotai, it's all one way. It's just how you understand it to get to serve a Kaddish Baruch Now, I would love to share with you today the Oral Chaim HaKadosh, he says like this. He brings down, he says, Ki yeli ish ben sorer umore, When a person is going to have, when a man is going to have a rebellious child, listen to the language. Eneinu shomea, who does not listen, bekol aviv, who bekol imo, who is not going to listen to the voice of his father and to the voice of his mother. V'yisru and they're going to discipline him. Alem, and he's not going to listen to them. Rabotai, the Oral Chaim HaKadosh asks a question. The Oral Chaim, Oral Chaim HaKadosh wants to understand. He says, Tzarich Leda'at. We need to know. Omro Enenu says, I don't understand. Why does he have to say in the Torah, Enenu? It's literally spelled Aleph, Yud, Nun, Nun, Vav. Enenu. How come he doesn't say, Eino Shomea, that he doesn't listen? Rabotai, there's a very big difference when it comes to Eino Shumeya versus Eneinu Shumeya, Rabotai. Eino Shumeya means he doesn't listen. Meaning say that if he wants to listen, he can listen. But when you're dealing with Eneinu Shumeya, that's a different language the Oral Chaim and Kaddish going to tell us. He cannot listen. Even if he wants to listen, he cannot listen. Rabotai, I want to show you today that the Oral Chaim and you know, they say that, uh, that there's one rabbi that said that this case actually one time did happen. I don't want to get into this right now. But a lot of Chacham hold that this never happened. So who's the Torah speaking to? Rabotai, this Ben Sorer Umarer, this rebellious child is none other than us. We rebel against the Kaddish Baruch Hu day in and day out. Day in and day out. Day in and day out. And Rabotai still Hashem has mercy on us. But Hashem Rabotai wants us to come back to Him. So He always gives us time. That's what we say. In the 13th attributes, read the 13th attributes, you'll see how Hashem is very merciful with the Jewish people. But I want to show you something today over here. What, what does it mean to be a rebellious son? Why are we rebelling against the Kaddish Baruch Hu? Meaning by not listening. Why is it so hard for us to put away the devices? Why is it so hard for us to learn, to daven, to pray, to do anything in Abotai? Why is it so hard to do anything today? Rabbi said, listen to this or Chaim HaKadosh. He says, Shahel Omar Eino Shumei. He should have said, who does not listen. He didn't have to tell you Eino Shumei, who cannot listen. Ve'ula Shibola He wants to say, maybe the pastor comes to tell you, try to teach you an idea. Ki adam mamlich bitocho yeitzahara. When a person crowns the yeitzahar over himself, meaning he gives authority to it, and allow you to dictate all of his actions. Here we go. He loses the ability to understand or even to hear anything, meaning rebuke, any rebuke that is said unto him. Anytime a person wants to rebuke him, he can't listen. Rabotai, the Torah is going on this rebellious son. This rebellious son is us, Rabotai. The way we behave with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Anytime we get a rebuke from a rabbi, he's not a good rabbi. Go with the rabbis that love you. I would love you guys to see what the Chacham write on the rabbis that do rebuke. It says, when you get rebuked by a friend, love him. When you're loved by a friend, hate him. Because Rabotai, the ones that tell you the emet, that's the emet, Rabotai said. The rebuking is emet. It's very, very important to educate ourselves in the way of Akadosh Baruch Hu's ways. And people think the way we're living life or the way we're doing things, we think we're good. You will be surprised when you open the Shulchan Aruch. Just open the Shulchan Aruch. You know, I was learning with the guys on Shabbat. And 
You know, we're learning that right now we do, right? Vayavo, Rashim Apana, Vayikra, Amunai, Amunai, Kelrechum, right? Rabotai, do you know I was very shocked? Chacham of idea, I used to do it myself. Chacham of idea, and Rav Benjamin Tzafi Shlita bring bottle and bring down that Vayavo, Rashim Apana, Vayikra should only be said by the Chazan. And we should say it quietly with him. When we get to Hashem, Hashem, we have to now raise our voices. So it was very funny because the half of the guys that heard me say this on Shabbat were actually good. They were all quiet. But the other ones, Rabotai, I don't want to say I'm Ratzim, that they don't know. Vayavor, Hashem, Apana, Vayikra. Rabotai, Rabotai. Because we think when people do something, we think that's right. They might have a bigger keeper than I do. They might have a bigger beard than I do. They might have people coming down older to their shoulder. A boy said, it's about educating oneself in the halakha. It's about knowing what's right and, and wrong. When you think that if, Rabbi Tzadik doesn't have to be a rabbi. When you think eh, over there, he, the Chacham, the, I think it was Orchot Tzadik, I forgot the Sefer. Over there he brings down that when you have a friend that rebukes you and tells you what you're doing is wrong, him you have to love. When you have a friend that tells you, hey, everything's okay, you're good, you're good, him you have to hate. Because with him you'll never grow in your life. He's never, he's not putting any weights on you for you to build off. But the friend that tells you, he tells you, listen, the way you're speaking is wrong. You're not coming to down is wrong. You're not learning is wrong. My, does it hurt? It will hurt. But will make you a better person? A hundred percent about time. People in any sport, in any profession, in anything, the ones that become successful is the ones that have pressure. Not the ones when you're talking, you're good, you're good, you're good. That's why these people are bombs rolling them. They sit on the street or they work in McDonald's. The people that are, they work on themselves and they like rebuke and they break themselves. Rabotai, these people are CEOs, but athletes, they're the best athletes out there. That's why in the NBA you have professionals. Very few can get in there. Why? Because they lose sleep. They, they can eat certain foods. They can do certain things. They have rules and regulations even there. But anything, Rabotai, it's all about what you put importance to. So when you think that when your friend tells you that you're a good person, oh, you're like, ah, I'm a good person, ah, I'm a good person. So how do you ever want to grow? How do you ever want to know what you're doing right now is wrong? You're never going to know. But the guy that tells you it's wrong, Rabotai, even if you're going to hate him tomorrow, but if in your mind, subconsciously, eventually one day you're going to change, one day you're going to tell him thank you. You know, unfortunately, I know of a case There was a guy, whatever, he was in, uh, with a group of friends. They had over there one friend, Rabotai, one friend. They were not, I'm not talking about right now religion, I'm talking about secular people, Rabotai. There was one friend. But even though they were secular, they knew what was right and they, and not they. This particular friend knew what's right and wrong. Just Rabotai, logically speaking, he didn't want to do drugs. He didn't want to drink. He was very scared to hustle shalom, ever sleep with girls. He stayed away from everything that his father told him not to do. Because the father said that these things are wrong. You don't want to do these. You know, you don't, you don't want to get AIDS, HIV, low and so on and so forth. Drugs, people can get killed. Rabotai, make the long story short. So as long as this good friend was influencing his other friend, the other friend had some form of life. He was going to school, he was going to college, he was working, he was dating, and he was on the verge of getting married. Another friend came, I don't know from where about time. Another friend came, not a good friend, told him, why do you have to listen to that good friend? Come with me, I want to show you something you've never seen. So they went about time. They went one night to a club and then they did something else and then they did something else. About time, listen to this very carefully. He taught him how to drink. He taught him how to do drugs. He taught him how to chas from Lolenu, sleep around with women while he was still dating his girl. Rabbi said, eventually he saw what life is about. He told the good friend, he says, you know, why am I wasting my life with you when I can go and have a good time? Rabotai, today, we're talking about maybe 30 years later, that friend that wounded him is nowhere to be found. He's living his life. That friend that he ruined never got married, never got a job, lives with his parents. Rabotai, do you understand what does it mean to have a good friend and a bad friend? A good friend and a bad friend is not defined by the one that's always telling you, come, let's do this, let's have a good time. 
you're okay, nothing's wrong. Rabotai, a good friend is the one that rebukes you. A bad friend is the one that allows you to do everything. Rabotai, it's not my words, these are the words of Chazal. In any event, Rabotai, I want to continue over here. I want to show you, Rabotai, what does that mean? So he continues over here and he says, when a person allows the Yitahar to rest, to rule over him, he loses the ability to understand or even listen to rebuke. Now, Rabbi said, you ever thought about one time, why when you tell your child something, they answer back? From where does the child know how to answer back? If they don't see this anywhere, they'll never answer back. A child is in, by nature, has to be afraid of parents, just like we are afraid of police. Rabotai, the answer is very simple. When children go to school, depending what school they go to, or the garbage that they watch on the phone, and they educate the children over there, that if your father or mother said the word, do you call the police, and you have the rights to it? Then Rabotai, thanks to you, they're not answering back to you. I've seen children that put their fathers behind bars. Why? Because the father was very nice enough to give him an iPhone or iPad, thinking he's a good father. It doesn't work like this, Rabotai. It doesn't mean by being a good father, you have to give everything. There are limits. You have to know who you're dealing with. Each child individually. That's what Or Chaim HaKadosh is telling you, Rabotai, when you give these things to the children, or in our case, ourselves, we start becoming closed. We have... we. We, we can't, our heart is mitumtam, it's sealed. It can't do anything. Even if you want to come and serve Hashem, you can't, it's hard for you. Why? Because the Yetzahar and Rabotai, you allow the Yetzahar to control you. How do I allow the Yetzahar to control you? If I went and I down Mincha Daravid, Shacharit, I learned to write in the morning a little bit. Because Rabotai, after when you come back, he controls you immediately with the phone. Or with something else, or doing something else with your eyes when you're walking into the street. Or speak about Shnar Rabotai, there's many things he can control you. If you cannot control yourself, the way you eat, the way you speak, the way you wake up in the morning, the way you down, if you can't control that, that means the Yetzirah has full com control over you. So what do you think when the rabbi or somebody tells you you're doing something wrong, you get upset with him. Why do you get upset with him? Not because you get upset with him. It's because the Yetzirah does not want you to accept what he's saying. It's the Yetzirah. Listen to the language that he says. Here we go, Rabotai. How is that possible that a person loses the ability? How is it possible that a person loses the ability to understand or listen to words of rebuke that is said to him? He says, Ki omed chalev, Because the Yetzer Ahara Rabotai stands at the entrance of the heart and it prevents the words that is being said to him, it prevents it from reaching his soul. Rabotai, that's why they say you can hear air, all the musar you want in the world. But if it doesn't come in here, it'll never change. That's when I told you in the beginning, do people want to change? Of course people want to change. But why can't they change? Because it only gets up to here, it only reaches the ears. It never reaches the heart. When it reaches the heart, Rabotai, that's when you're going to change. A person has to allow it to sink in. A person has to say it over and over. This is the endless, I can't. This is not good. It's not for me. This is wrong. You have to, Rabotai, go out and fight a full war with the Yitahara. Yeah, okay, here's the phone. Uh, should I do it? Should I do it? Okay. Uh, two minutes. Uh, two, two minutes. For you know, it's two hours. Three, three hours. Rabotai doesn't work like that. You pick up the phone. You say, I'm not going to watch. You, I'm telling you, you have to say it literally. Make it real. I'm not watching anything. It's not for me. You want to destroy me, Rabotai. You think it's funny. But this is the MS. Phones, Rabotai, they're good, they can help, but at the same time, if not used properly, they can destroy, like, like a gun. Now we have to see, Rabotai, why is the Yetzirah so concerned? But he allows you to listen, correct? But why does he allow you to enter into the heart? Because the Oral Chaim HaKadosh says, Ki hem misham, Rabotai. Do you know why? Because if a person is going to go ahead and he's going to listen to words of rebuke, that's going to obligate the Yitzhahara to come out from, his, from the place of the heart. Once you accept, once you admit, I'm wrong, I messed up, I'm a bum. Rabotai, that's the beginning of all growth. 
If you ever see when they have this, uh, what do they call this? When people have smoking problems or drinking problems, they go, they have these sessions, right? Everybody says, I did this, I did this. Why do they have to admit what each one did? Just continue forward. Not a butai. A person has to realize where he's wrong, where he messed up. That's the beginning. When you know that, then you're able to grow. That's what the Pasuk says, Rabbi Taj, Sur Mera. First remove the bad, then Vasetov, then do good. But what do we do, Rabbi Taj? We have the bad and we do on top of it good, thinking we're doing something. He says, when Shalti Hadar, he said, I compared this, I made an analogy. He said that there was a king that his gatekeepers were thieves and robbers. They would steal everything from the king. So other people from outside would see what was going on and they wanted to complain to the king. Rabota, is it possible to say that the gatekeepers are going to allow these people that want to complain on them to allow them to come in to complain to the king? Never. Because they know the second they walk in, it's all done. He says, He says, so too with us. Same thing with us. The Yetzirah knows. The day that you accept the rebuke, the day you make it part of you. He knows that's the day he is out and you're growing. But he is like those king's officers that are by the gate. The gatekeepers. He says, I don't care what he does. As long as he doesn't accept it. As long as he, I don't care, let him do As long as he doesn't come over here, I'm still fine. The second that the rebuke reaches the heart, Rabotai, everything changes. That's what the Pasuk says. That's what the Pasuk says. He cannot listen. Not that he does not want to listen. Even if he wants to, he cannot. Because the Yetar does not allow him. Pirush. He completely lacks the, comp the capability of hearing what has to be said to him? You speak to him, it's as if you speak it to a deaf ear. That's the way Rabotai the Eitzhar works. He knows Rabotai how to keep people back in Abodot Hashem. The words will never reach him because from the one that's preventing him, and which is what? Which is the Eitzhar. Hayyushev at Miftechei Alev, Komram Zal, and Masay Berchot Al Samach Alev, Amur Alev. Like our Chazal said, in Berchot, page 61, side 1, that the Yetzirah sits at the entrance of the heart. He knows, Rabotai, the day that a person accepts that what he's doing is wrong, he knows that he's going to change. But he doesn't allow him. You're right, and they're always wrong. A boy said, this Gimor is brought down in Samach Aleph in Masai Berchot. It says over there, Amar Rav, Rav said, Yetzirah Dumel Zvuv. The Yetzirah is compared to a fly. Why a fly? Because the more you, no matter how many times you're going to, Make it go away, he still comes back. He sits between the two entrances of a person's heart. He does not allow any words of Torah, any words of rebuke, any words of Botai to come inside there. Because the day it does come in, he's out. And that he does not want. Rabotai, I want to share with you two more pieces. Actually, three more pieces. Of the importance of being able to do Teshuvah, especially in the months of Elul. Now, when I say a person has to do Teshuvah again, Rabotai, last time I spoke about Selichot, you know, people come and, uh, you know, people come, but, I don't know, should I say it again? Rabotai, people come to Selichot, right? You feel bad that you cheated on Hashem, you feel bad that you watched garbage, you feel bad that you did built the Torah, you feel bad that you spoke Hashem, you feel bad that you cursed. You feel bad that you did X, Y, and Z. There's a lot of error that we do. But Rabotai, after that, after the, that confession, when you walk out from Tzlichot, are you a different person? Or are you that same person that before you walked in? Is Rabotai, is it really becoming a world of clowns where we, where we are acting everything out? Because that's what's happening. Now, I'm not saying everybody, Rabotai. There are exceptions. But what are we doing, Rabotai? What are we doing? We come to Slichot, we bang on our chest. I saw Rabbi Tzim 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 in the Sefer, he says, 
in the name of his father, why do we bring in our heart? Same concept of the Oracle Chaim HaKadosh says. Rabotai, because we're saying, you made me sin. You did it. You did it. You made me look after that girl. You made me not kosher. You made me not say a bracha. You made me not learn Torah. What's over here, Rabotai? The Yitzhahara. Only he can make you do. Nothing else. Only he can make you go against the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Nothing else, Rabotai. Rabotai, so I want to share with you a Rambam where people should understand I am not Chasu Shalom. I dam Baruch Hashem Slichot. I'm not saying not to dam Slichot. But I'm trying to bring out a point. A person has to have meaning and he has to be able to change his ways when he says Slichot. And I spoke to a rabbi. You know, I told him. I said, what's Peshat of Slichot if you're not changing? He says, one day they're going to get there. Okay. I don't know when, when that one day is. It's going to be 40 years, 50 years. Fine, no problem. Rabotai, that's his opinion. I want to read for you what the Rambam has to say because this is the difference, Rabotai, when you're learned and when you're not learned. When you're not learned, you'll buy anything anybody has to tell you. When you learn and somebody tells you such a statement, which goes against a reason, like I'll read for you, that's a very big problem because you're not a reason. You can't say that it's better for a person to do slichot because the question was, is it better for a person to change and never do slichot? Or is it better for a person to do slichot and never change? He said, do slichot and never change. Whatever. He said, one day he's going to come to change. Doesn't make sense. I want to read for you Rambam. What does it mean to do Teshuvah? Rabotai, you know, as many shu'urim like this that I give once a week, Baruch Hashem, and Haram, and I want to thank Aaron Kakuri for putting it up. He himself is unbelievable, Rabotai, the work that he puts into this, the time that he spends on adjusting all these uh, videos. Rabotai, I want to share with you how does one do real Teshuvah? What is required of us? Because we can come to four, we can come 40 days to do slichot and we did nothing. How could that be? I want to read for you a Rambam. In Hilchot Teshuvah in Perek Bet, in Halacha Bet, the Rambam says, Umahi ha Teshuvah. Rabotai, what's considered to be Teshuvah? I'm going to read the words for you in Hebrew and I'm going to translate it slowly. So people can understand, it's not only about coming and doing slichot, chatanu avinu l'fanecha, chatati aviti pashati, but also rabotai, to do it with meaning, to try to really abandon our old ways. You want to become a new person, like I told you before, rabotai. You want to try to, I'm telling you, just try it one time. Get off that garbage. Again, if you have to business, you, if there's educational, fine. But over there, also Rabotai, you will fall because while you're doing this, you're watching other garbage. I've seen Rabotai people that went to learn Torah to listen to one rabbi. And the way they listen to one rabbi, they watch other pornography stuff. So Rabotai, you have to have a filter. Even the news is not so healthy to watch. Rabotai, say, listen to this carefully. What does Teshuvah mean? Who she azov hachote chet o? He says the sinner has to abandon the sin. Now you come to do chatan l'fanech. One of the things bitalu torotecha. One of the things that we say in the chatan chatan avinu pashanu is bitalu torotecha. So you say I Hashem I right I feel bad that I did bitul to I did I nullified from uh, I nullified myself from learning Torah. And everything else, all right, I didn't watch, you know, I watched improper stuff and so on, but God knew, I betrayed you. And there's a lot of stuff, Rabotai. I disrespected my parents and so on and so forth. Listen to this. You're doing all this khatano, avina. Did you really stop all that? No. So now, not only are we not doing a mitzvah, we're doing a vera. Which vera, Rabotai? The vera of midvar sheker tirchak. The Torah tells you, stay, distance yourself from falsehood. Distance yourself from lies. And you're a liar right now at this moment. I mean, my life, what? Rabbi, you changing? You're not changing, Rabbi. Tai. Don't tell me you change. Rabbi, I, Rabbi, I'm not speaking about you. I'm just speaking to you. Is the person really changing? No, he's not. Because you don't see him learning Torah. 
He asked, why don't you don't tell him? He has no time. So why don't you do So skip that bit out of the Skip it, don't lie. Rabbi said, I think it's from Ben Tion Abu Shaul, the only Tion. He says, if a person has a, a fight with somebody and he doesn't forgive him, he shouldn't say, Ribbon Shalom, Harim Muhammad Sulaik Muhammad Mishi, he his own TVs, and so on and so forth. The prayer of Krishna Lamita that I forgive everybody that upset me, angered me with my body, with the body, with whatever it's going to be. You shouldn't say it because you're lying. Rabbi said, We're becoming, Rabbi told you before, I'll tell you again. We're becoming clowns. It's mind-boggling, mind-boggling how you have today, Rabotai, people that don't know. Forget about Alphys. They don't even know what the first halakh of Shukhan Arach is. And they're Chazanim. They don't even know what, what, what's required of them to be a Chazan. It's nuts. It's unbelievable, Rabotai, what's going on. You have rabbis in the shul they give to Amma Arach. How's that possible, Rabotai? How's that possible? The, the, the life that we're living, a life of Shekhar, Crookedness. You think people are bad. You don't. Nah, Rabbi, so let me be quiet. Rabotai, it's not normal what's going on. And who's going to say? Nobody's going to say anything. Who's going to open their mouth? Nobody. Why, Rabotai? Why? Very simple. Like one, one big rabbi said people are more concerned for their honor and their money. And their position, then they're concerned for your well-being. Very simple, Rabota. That's how it works. You like, you don't like, that's your problem. You have, Rabota, you have Emmet, you have rabbis that are Emmet out there. But you also have otherwise, Rabota. I speak about this a million times. Find yourself a rabbi who knows how to learn. Not one day Yeshua, one day Chupah, one day wedding, one day Bar Mitzvah, one day Brit one day Brit Yitzchak, one day... When is he going to learn Torah? Do you know why... <laughs> There's a, I think my second baruch, I think I believe. It brings down over there that you know that in the city, you have to have 10 Talmud Chachamim learning and you have to have the city support them. Rabotai, why is it so important to support the rabbi? Why is it so important to give the rabbi money? Why do I want him to sit and learn Torah? Very simple. Because if I'm not going to give him money to sit and learn Torah, what is he going to tell me on Shabbat or on Saturday? What is he going to teach me? If he's all day working, what is he going to teach me? Stories. Moshe Rabbeinu came down with the Luchot after 40 days. How many times can you hear the same story? How many times, Rabotai? And you guys feel good about it. Idiots! Excuse me for my language. That's what we are. We buy into anything. And we pay them, Rabotai. You are real Tawdi Chacham that they need the money. And they're not getting it. And, nah. Rabotai, all I'm trying to tell you is we can't be clowning around. Now is not the time to clown around. Now is the time to do tshuva. And it's not like you guys think to come and Yeah, why are you sleeping? Do you know what you're reading? Do you know what you're reading? Why are you sleeping? All year long we're sleeping about time. It's unbelievable. You ask the person to come to Torah in the morning. He can't. Why can't you? And if this was your job, if this was somewhere you had to fly out to, you can, but this you cannot. Rabotai continues the rumble. He says, he has to abandon, the sinner has abandoned his sin. I'll tell you why after. He's going to say, why? If you don't abandon your sin, I don't know what you're, what you're doing. You have to remove it from your mind, from your machshot. You can't think about it no more. If you decide not to watch Instagram no more, or whatever the garbage is, make a decision once and for all. How, how old are you? 30, 40, 50, 60? What do you think? You live to 120? Rabotai, I got news for you. I got bad news for you. The Gemara says, Rabotai, 60 is an old age. 70 is a ripe age, old ripe age. 80, you need Hashem's help, up to 80. Rabbi Sai, 60, that's already called an old age. How old are you? 40, 50, how old are you? So what you got, another 10 years on you? And what you doing, running around making money? Rabotai, take yourself into your hands. Work, I told you not to work, work, Rabotai. Keep yourself active. But get off these garbages, you don't understand, you destroy yourself. 
You will regret it, Rabotai, and I'm telling you at the Yom Adin, you're going to look back, you're going to say, what am I, Rabotai, I'm not, you're going to say, I, I don't want to use it, but I have to. What an idiot was I not to do it, what the rabbi said. That's what's going to be in the end. You will see, Rabotai. You will be surprised. You thought you came. Mincha Shacharit Aravi, you think you did something. I got news for you, Rabotai. That you'll get rewarded for. But listen to me very carefully. But what about everything else that you did? Ah, you only look at the good that you do. What about everything that we didn't, we don't do? Rabotai, it's not my words. The Rambam is saying, you come to Slichot, you got to do complete Teshuva. Stop being liars. Stop clowning around. Stop clowning around. Rabotai, you're not ready. Skip the Chatat You're not, do something about it. But don't lie. Don't say you're going to do it and you're not going to do it. Don't clown around. Make a decision once and for all. This is it. I'm changing. I'm becoming a better person. Try it, Rabotai. Try for one week. You'll feel better. You, 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 Rabotai, you'll see the energy around you is going to be better. You'll be a happier person because you're not tied down to anything. People take the rush. What happened here? The game, the football game, the basketball, the news, the TV. The, you're, oh, something's always controlling you. If it's not that, then it's your family, not that, then it's your, your friends. Control your own life, Rabbi side. How is that done through only Torah? Anything other than that, Rabbi you're not controlling your life. Other people are controlling you. The Rabbi continues and he says, V'yigmor bilibo. He should resolve in his heart. Shelo yasehu od. He shouldn't do it furthermore. Shenemar, the Pasuk says, Yazov resha darko. And the positive let the evil person, the wicked man, abandon his ways, etc. Vichen and so to eat nachem. Regret Rabotai Al Shavar. Feel bad that you transgress against the Kadush Baruch Hu. Rabotai Shenemarki Acharei Shuvi Nachamti. Like the positive says, after I came back, I felt bad. Viyaid Alav Yudei Talmud and the Kadush Baruch Hu. Rabotai who knows all the secrets. Shlo yashuv lezeh hached leolam, Rabotai. And when Hashem is able to go ahead and testify to you that you're never going to come back, you should know that you are a true bal uh, to If Hashem is able to testify to you that you never come back to the sin, that's how you know, Rabotai, that you did complete the shul. He continues and he says, "V'tzarich litvadot b'sefatav." You need to confess with your lips. And you have to state these matters that he has resolved in his heart. Meaning, that's what we do today. Asham, the Bagadu, Khatan, right? All these things. Rabotai, if we don't do this, if we don't do this, we have a very big problem. Because the next Allah, in Perek Bet and Allah, Gimel, the Rambam says, Anybody who confesses with his words, but he didn't resolve in his heart to abandon the sin. This is compared to a person who he goes to the mikvah and he has the dead rat in his hand. The tevila doesn't help him. Or he doesn't say actually that. He says, he says a rat in his hand. Let me keep it. The way the Rambam says it. Until you're going to go ahead and you're going to throw away the shares, the rat, you should know that the is not going to help you. To give you a better understanding, if a woman goes into a mikvah, let's say Rabotai, she had a on her. Let's say Rabotai, she had nail polish, it got nicked, she went to the mikvah. You guys understand that that's a chatzitza and that that mikvah is no good, Rabotai? You have to understand that there's certain chatzitzot, inter, uh, interferences or interpositions between that it interferes between the water and the body that makes the woman not kosher. Do you understand that if your wife walks into the mikvah and she has a chatzitza and she's not kosher, you can't sleep with her and if you do sleep with her, you have karet? Rabotai, understand the same concept over here. That if you don't throw away the sherets, if you don't throw away the avarice from your hand, and you're coming and you're telling Hashem, ah, I'm wrong, I didn't. and then you come back and you continue doing it, Rabotai. 
you know different than that woman that went to the mikvah with the chatzit on her hand. Why do you need it, Rabotai? You lose sleep. You're wasting 45 minutes of saying slichot. I'm not telling you again not to say slichot. Make a resolution to become better, to change. Put goals. Okay, I will, I'll stop watching this in this time. Okay, I'm watching when I watch six hours a day TV. I'm not telling you it's allowed. I'm watching three hours of sport. I'm not telling you it's allowed. I'll cut it down to two hours. In a week from now, I'll cut it down. Or in a month from now, I'll cut it down to an hour and a half. In a month from now, I'll cut it down to an hour. In a month from now, I'll cut it down to 45 minutes. Now within a year, you already stopped watching this garbage. But Rabotai, you have to stop. You have to stop. But do we stop Rabotai? No. I won't tell you that's not so healthy. Even if you can try to do it, I'm not telling you it's mutad. But if that will help you, try to do it. But I want to explain to you something. This is very bad. Because the media, it doesn't, it's done in a way where when you watch it, it just tells you, go watch more, watch more, watch more. It's like it's never enough. I know people, unfortunately, Rabotai, that they fall asleep to movies. Is that normal? You got to be sick to go to sleep while watching a movie. To that extent, you keep your eyes open until you could no longer see, until you could no longer keep yourself awake, and then you go to sleep. How do I had uh, somebody complain to me? Her husband's watching TV while she's on the, inside the bed. And then they want to know why they have shalom bite problems. Shalom bite starts right there in the room, Rabotai. If you ever want to know why women, people have shalom bite problems, it's only because in the, everything starts from the bedroom. Not their mother, not their father, everything in the bedroom. Every all sorts of shalom bite is the bedroom. Rabotai, that's what he says. We can't hold so that's what he says. Umodeh! When you admit to what you did was wrong, ve'ozev, and when you abandon what you did was wrong, Yerucham, Rabotai, only then will Hashem have mercy, and only then will He forgive you. Otherwise, Rabotai, this is why I was going to try to bring out. When somebody tells you, yeah, just go, just do it, just do it, just do it, without having a goal in mind, how do you go against a Rambam? How do you go against a clear Rambam? The Rambam clearly says, it's like Sheris Biyado. What are you doing? If you have a plan, you have a goal, fine. But if you're just coming, you know, like, I don't, I don't know if I can say the rabbi's name. Many years ago, about that one rabbi said, all year long, he never sees people. Even the 40 years, uh, Sadiqo never sees them. But on Air Rosh Hashanah, Air Rim Kippur, his shoe was packed. They think they come, they're going to sing, Ben Adam, Alechan, Erdam. They think that's going to just all oh, what? Hashem is going to raise all the millions of years that they did throughout the year. Rabotai, HaKadosh Baruch gave us Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur itself atones Rabotai for many sins. Not for sins, Ben Adam al I'm not Chasr Shom Rabotai trying to show people that it's not doable. I'm trying to show people that they have to stop Clowning around. You won't play like these games in your business. Not with your wife. Not with your children's school. Not with nothing. Religion, Rabotai, should not be any different. Religion should not be any different. You take everything else serious. Take Hashem serious also. Because in the end, Rabotai, in the end... The only thing you're going to need down there is HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Mitzvot and the Torah and Asim Tovim that you did. Everything else, Rabotai, no, but I was giving on the on Shabbat, I was giving this drasha, not this particular, I'm saying I was giving something else, uh, but but I said this is what I'm about to say. I asked them, I said, let me ask you a question. You ever been in Cooper Avenue, Lowland, or on 49th exit where they buried the Jewish people, whatever? You ever been in the cemetery? Tell me, after they close the mound, right, after they throw the dirt, how long do the people stand around? How long? So one guy said, five minutes, only 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I said, you guys are being very nice. You already, you already saw that they said more than a minute? Rabotai, once they bury the body, once they put the dirt on top, Everybody goes to the everybody goes on moving. They abandon him. Nobody stays there. 
Nobody sits there unless it's the mother lolling, chasu shalom, who lost a child lolling, nobody should ever know. But nobody stays there and says, you know, let me see Taylor for him. Let me take it upon myself to learn Torah. They think they do you show once a year, they're good. Or you show once a month, they're good. You know, I was speaking to somebody. He says Kaddish, whatever, for I think his mother or his father, I'm not sure. And I tried to explain to him. It was by us for one time for Nets Kiddush. And I tried to explain to him that people need to understand when it comes to doing Yishro and Kaddish and all these things, if you only say one word of Torah, let's put it like this, I'm not exaggerating. One word of Torah equals a million Kaddishim. One word of Torah equals a million Yishros that you do. But it's not for nothing that the Torah tells us, the Chazal tell us, Talmud Torah connected Kulam. It's not for nothing. Because Talmud Torah is against everything. People think they come to see Kaddish and they leave, that's it. Rabotai, when a person learns Torah, it's better than all the billions of Kaddish that he's going to ever say. I'm not telling you again not to say Kaddish. Say the Kaddish, but also learn Torah. Understand it the proper way. Rabotai, I want to share with you also another piece today. I have a Teshuvah Me'ahava by Rav Chaim Kanevsky. Zatzal. He brings down over here, he says, Chiyuv Onish on the Enas Shiyachol of Ruach. He brings down over also the Rambam. He says, what happens if a person was held in, in captivity and he was able to run away, but he didn't. He said, he, he's, he's actually, he should be punishable. Now there's a machloket if by death or not, which I'm, I'm going to just try to read for you right now. I'm not going to go into the whole thing because it's a lot. There's a lot of details here, but I want to just focus on one Rambam. He says like this, Katava Rambam, the Rambam writes, Right, if on anyone, if lowly chasushov ever happens that a person is facing a situation where he has to be killed and not transgress the sin, but he went and he did the avera, and he didn't die because technically he had to die. Harezem michalel et Hashem. He says that this person is considered to be a person who desecrates Hashem's name. Now, just for people that are not familiar with the concept, there are other times when you're allowed to die, it depends, 10 people, 100 people, I'm not going to get into it right now, if you're making kids Hashem or not. I'm going to get just to the basic, basic halakha, which is brought down, I believe, in, in uh, your in Shukran, your day, I believe, Simon Kufnun Zain, in Allah Aleph, over there, the halakha speaks about but the three cardinal sins. Shh. I believe Rabotai Simon Kuf Nun Zain. I think it's 157, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, please forgive me, but I, I'm almost 99% sure that is that. I just do not want to go right now and start searching for it. He said like this. Over there are three cardinal sins. That if a person, if the non-Jews, they come and they put a gun to his head and they say, sleep with a married woman, he has to die, he has to get killed. Or if they tell him, kill another person, he has to get killed. Even if the next person is the next big rabbit, it doesn't matter. How do you know who's dumb, uh, whose blood is uh, redder? Or if they're going to tell you to do a desire, to do idolatry, a person has to die. Rabotai, let's say, let's just give one case. We tell a person, listen, we want you to do a desire, we want you to do idolatry, and he does it. He was supposed to die, but he does it. The Rambam says he just desecrated Hashem's name. And so on, he continues, V'chulu. V'afa pichen, even so, even though he went ahead and he desecrated Hashem's name, M'pnei shavar be'onis, since he did it forcefully, it was not something that he wanted to do, E'en malkin oto, we're not allowed to give him lashes, we cannot give him malchut. V'en tzarich lomar she'en mitetin oto bedin, afilu harab be'onis. When Needless to say that we're not going to even give him a death penalty from the court, from the bedding, even if he killed somebody forcefully. That means I say the Goyim told Reuven, kill Shimon. If you don't kill Shimon, we'll kill you. Reuven was supposed to die. But Reuven killed Shimon. Even in such a case, since it was done through coercion, through force, we cannot do it. We cannot give him Malkut and we cannot give him the death penalty, even if he killed somebody. 
שאין מרכין וממתין אלא לעובר ברצונו בעדים והתראה שנאמר וכו'. You can only give a malkut and you can only kill a person only if he transgressed something willingly with the witnesses and they had to actually first warn him. Aval, here we go, about I want to focus on these next words. Aval, however, im yachol nimalet nafsho, but if he's able to save himself, v'levroach mitachad yad ha-melech ha-resha'ah, he's able to run away from the hands of the wicked king. Ve'eino ose, and he doesn't do, he doesn't run away, he still sits there. Hinehu ki kelev, shishav, shav al-ki'o. He's like a dog that went back to his vomit. When a dog eats, he spits everything out. Is that 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 that's what he looks at the person? And he's called that he does idolatry intentionally. And he is going to be removed from I'm sorry, he's going to be removed from the world to come. He's going to go to the lowest level, to the lowest level that there is in Gehenom. Now, Rabotai, nobody should ever know this case. I was given this shiur, like I usually do on Shabbat, from 3 to 6 or 3 to 6, 20, whatever it was. And I said this piece to them, but I also added a twist to this piece. Now, Baruch Hashem Rabotai, a lot of us, we should never ever know of the situations. But what does the Rambam want to tell us? Listen to this carefully. I want to try to make a Kalva Homer. Abba, listen to this very carefully. What does he have to say over here? Im hu yacholi malet nafshov levroch, etc. And he doesn't do so. He says he, as, he's like a dog that went back to his vomit. And he's called one who serves the stars intentionally, and he's going to be removed from the world to come, and he's going to go to the lowest level of Gehenna. So I wanted to try to understand the Rambam like this. Rabotai, do you know this person was trying to tell us to do a virus, who that is? It's not the Goyim. It is the Yitzhahara. He comes to you and he tells you to do a vera. And Rabotai, if you have an opportunity to run away, like to put a filter or not to go to the beaches or not to go to mixed parties and so on and so forth. If you're able to do it and you don't do it, Rabotai, I want to read for your language with that understanding. If you're able to save yourself and run away from the wicked hands of the Rasha, from the wicked king, who is that wicked king? The Yitzhahar, if you're able to, and you don't do it, you're like a dog that goes back to his vomit. And you called one who does idolatry intentionally, and you'll be removed from the world to come. You're going to go to the lowest level in Gehenna. Now Rabbi said, listen to this carefully. This is pertaining to the three cardinal sins. I want to try to add a twist over here. Rabotai, when we are in Elul, where Hashem Himself comes down and He says, When He says, come back to me, Rabotai, He's giving us that opportunity to come back to Him, to do to Shua. You have an opening now. All year long, you're busy, okay. But Rabotai, the Selichot, the 10 days from Hashem to Yom Kippur should wake you up. Why aren't we still coming back to him? Rabotai, once Yom Kippur is done and then Hoshana Rabba, once the letters get sent out and you still didn't change, you still didn't, nothing moved by you. Rabotai, we have a very big problem with this Rambam. Because if you have the Yetar, which always forces you to do the errors, and you are able to run away and you don't run away, it's as if you're doing Avodot Kochavim intentionally. And you will be removed from all Maba and you'll inherit the lowest level in Gehenom. Now you might tell me, Rabbi, but this is only the three cardinal sins. Rabbi, I want to explain to you like this. These are the three cardinal sins. But when there are certain affairs that when a person does, because he never does to shoot on them, he'll never be able to inherit all Maba. 
And not only that, he'll go all the way to the lowest level of Gehno. I'm not going to get into certain examples right now. I'll give you one of them. If a person gives his friend a nickname, a derogatory nickname, he made it up for him. And he never fixed the situation. Rabotai, he's one of the people that go down to Gehno and they never go up to Olam Abba. I don't care how much mitzvot you have. Our Torah was not given just as a one-sided way. Our Torah is two-sided. You have Averus and you have mitzvot. You have sin and you have composite, good things that you have to do. Rabotai, and that's what we have to understand. We need to understand that now is an opening for every single one of us to run, to try to run. Put away all this garbage. Just put everything away, Rabotai. I'm telling you, just try and try to protect yourself. Run away from the wicked king, the Yetzirah, run away from him. While Hashem is still here. And then Rabbi Yisrael is going to be able to bless you. But if Rabotai, if not, if we have the sheriff's beyond and we go to Davon Slichot with the rat in our hand and go to the mikvah, how much that does already help? I just showed you, it doesn't help zero Rabotai. It's better off you will be sleeping than go to Davon. You know, Chacham Obadi brings down in Yomim, Yomim Naraim. He says, you have a person that he pushes himself early in the morning to get up. But why? Because he wants to show off his voice. He wants people to see how he sings. He likes, ah, damn, what a bubble, my sis. Rabotai, or the Chazal, my sis, what it doesn't matter who it's going to be. You know what Chacham Obadi says? He, he, you're starting to gain He says, he inherits two gain Why? Sleep. For what? Why are you doing something wrong? Rabotai, we need to start learning what the Torah, what the Shulchan Aruch, what our Chacham require of us. Not what we think is right or wrong. You know, you could tell a person, this is not right, beaches are not right, mixed parties are not right. You could speak to them. I'm talking about religious people. And they tell me they're kudo. What's kudo? Those kudo in 30 years, you never know, might sue you for divorcing their daughter. What do you think, kudo? Rabotai. First comes kudo. I don't want to say then kudo. I would love to keep it at kudo. We only do what Hashem says and not what anybody else says. That's how we have to serve 